hello and welcome to the 12th episode of the Borhat Tavern Podcast, a podcast all about Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. I'm your host, Daz, and I'm joined today by the co-hosts of the podcast, Sandy and Novich. And today, we're going to talk about a few things. Merlin is coming in a very short amount of time, in a few short hours, so we're excited to talk about her, give everyone's takes on baby Merlin. We're going to talk about Einik, because Einik is now officially back on the rotation, so Sandy's got a few things to say about that. And we're going to round the show off with a little round of Jeopardy. It's a fan favorite, so we thought we'd bring it back yet again. But before we start the show, Sandy, I finally understand why you're wearing the earrings. Uh, you, you told me to watch Demon Slayer, and I watched the first episode and a half today. So I knew, thought that'd make you excited. I, I am so excited. I was like, you haven't watched that? Like, I've been wearing these, you know? Now you see why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fresh off of binge watching the the ReZero um, anime just because I was like, you know what? I got to get through that before the collab comes. And I, I just finished it. And I told Sandy and she's like, okay, next on the list, Demon Slayer. And you were like kind of forceful about it, but in like a Sandy sort of way. So I was like, you know what? I, I better just, uh, just better start it now <laughs> before I get in trouble by, from Sandy. So I did. And it's pretty good. It's, I, I'm very interested to see where this, uh, this series is going to go. No spoilers or anything. Um, Novich, though, I hear you've had a pretty busy week and there's been a ton of content to get. Have you been able to get through it all, man? You know, especially with last weekend, you know, being um, a holiday, you have to like, uh, you know, spend time with family and there's work. And, you know, not that I keep pushing it off, you know, I, I, I do my dailies. But yeah, you, this this last couple of days I was uh, over this past weekend. It was just, you know, make sure that I I time it right to do all the content, especially like, you know, the the wheel to make sure that you use up all those or the exchange shops from the final boss. It was definitely definitely uh, to the last minute to literally up to this podcast like half an hour before I was still making sure that I, I took care of all those last minute stuff because it's a, it's a lot of good free uh, resources that they're they're giving out so. Um, definitely, definitely well welcomed. It was a hectic week in terms of content too. It's one of those things where I kept forgetting what I was forgetting. So I had to like look over all everywhere, basically, you know, looking for soldiers for those extra event memories, dungeons, whatever they call them. Like you, you had the final boss shop. You had to make sure you cleared day. There was, like you said, the spins, there's the new chest event, like uh, so many little exclamation marks all over the place in my UI. It was just a little crazy. It was nice again. Cause you get all the rewards, but it was a little, almost a little too much daily grind, uh, for me, but it's nice to get the extra PVE content, uh, dropping as frequently as it can. But the big thing, and we might as well just jump right into it that I think everyone wants to talk about. And I know that I'm dying to get my copy of green baby Merlin, Merlin daughter of Balaluin or whatever, however you pronounce it. Um, yeah, she's one of those characters that it seems like a lot of people are planning on skipping for, skipping her. And I mean, I can see exactly why they're planning on doing that. Um, we just came off of Assault Meliodas, which had a great banner. A lot of people might have skipped that one too, but there was a lot of good secondary characters, so a lot of people are short on gems. Um, and then you see Babe Merlin, not like she's she's good, but she's not like a meta shaking unit, like of the one per se. And a lot of people see the collab coming around the corner. Not to mention, we know that there's a Holy War festival on JP that was expected to drop last week or yeah, last week, but it's probably gonna be this week. So there's probably a new big unit coming out. I can see maybe why JP decided to delay their announcement until after the Berlin banner, because that you don't want people being like, give you more reason to skip. But anyhow, we've got green baby Merlin. Before we start talking about her, like, are you guys excited? Like you, you, you both plan on playing that we've talked about like almost every show for the past like a month, but like I'm doing one rotation. I don't know how, what do you guys, if, if your if your guys plans change, are you gonna still try and get a copy of her? What do you think, Sandy? Oh, definitely. I, I have to do one rotation. You know, I went back to work, so uh, I got paid. Um, and I'm like, Let, let's get those, you know, bundles in. Um, I'm hoping I really want to do like a, another pull video for my uh, channel. 
Um, might put on that t-shirt, very quick cosplay, and maybe I could do like a little baby Merlin uh, pull, but I'm hoping I get her. Hopefully I don't have to go all the way to the end to get her. Um, I'll be happy with 4-6, like you said, Daz. 4-6, <laughs> wow. I'm I'm actually considering like if I get her early, just stopping. Uh, one of the, I know, I, I'm okay getting her 1-6 just for collection and and. She's fairly strong. She, I mean, her ult, obviously, if you have it, 6-6 six, six is a lot stronger than a 1-6 ult. Um, but a lot of her damage output isn't because of her ult. So I'm perfectly happy, happy having her 1-6. Plus, we've got the collab coming up, like I mentioned, which is why a lot of people are skipping her. But then also, um, we do have a cosmetic sale uh, coming up, which is surprisingly huge, but not talked about a lot. And this is good for pay-to-play, free-to-play players, because... Those cosmetics are expensive. Having them go from 30 gems to 20 gems, it's you're saving a lot. So if you're going to be buying cosmetics, like this is the week to do it. Novage, I, I think one of the reasons they did the cosmetic sale here too, this is just my little like tin hat theory, is that they seem to time it with less desirable festival banners to try and offset maybe some revenue that they wouldn't get for like a the one banner, a Lost Vane Meliota style banner, right? Uh, they did they had the cosmetic sale last time for Festival King, which a lot of people knew they were going to skip because they already knew he was outdated. But Noage, what are your plans? Are you going to be spending on Merlin, spending on the collab? Now we've got the cosmetic sale. Has this changed your idea too? You know, I, I still, still priority on my list is the collab. Um, I would like to pull for Merlin and kind of take a feel of how well my luck is. I don't, I don't really want to plan to get to the very end, but I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you, you, you've played this game before, right? Where you throw a couple of gems at it and then you like, Oh, my luck, it looks like I'm getting a couple SSRs. So I'm like, maybe I'll get Merlin or something. Right. Next, you know, you're halfway through the banner and you're like, at this point, I need to make a decision. Like I've gone this far. If I finish it, I guarantee get her, right? And you're just like, I, I just need to do it. You know, and unfortunately for me, that's that's what happened with the Assault Melody. <laughs> I had to just finish the banner just to get them because I was just like, is it? I'm done. <laughs> I already invested this much into it. Might as well get them. <laughs> It's almost like they plan it like that. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's the whole gambling thing, right? Like you see that end and like you kind of hope you're like, oh, I got some early ones, like you said. Right? It makes you keep wanting to go. And then once you're pretty much after you're like halfway done, is you, you almost kind of have to finish because you're like, well, now it's not 900 gems to guarantee. It's only 400 or 300 or 200, however close to the end you are. And at that point, you, you're already pot committed. You might as well finish her off. <laughs> okay, let's, let's yeah, go over... Uh, Okay, go ahead, Novich. Yeah, I, I like your idea, though. Get one copy. If you get one copy of her early on, just, I, I'm going to stop. I don't, I'm don't. i not looking for multiple copies. Um, so, <laughs> Tandy's looking for four. <laughs> quit, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> I think for the yeah. one, the one I got my first copy really early, and I was like, oh, you know. But then you get into the problem, you're like, well, if you get, if you get like, say, like, green Merlin or baby Merlin within the first couple hundred gems, be like, well, maybe I'll get a couple more on the way to 900, right? It's just a downward spiral. So if you can quit, if you have the willpower to quit while you're ahead, if you were initially planning to do a full rotation, all the power to you, but we'll have to see how this goes. Maybe we'll report back next show on how all this went for us, but uh, getting into baby Merlin and her skills. And let's talk a bit about her because she is a very interesting character as most festival characters are. They're not like your standard run of the mill, ordinary characters. They got a lot of special stuff to their kid, a lot of nuances. So we're going to go over those. Her skill set. Her first skill is called mana ballista. It inflicts power strike, which gives additional damage equal to the enemy's resistance. And she does it for 190 on a bronze, 285 for silver, 475 attack modifier for gold, and single target, so one enemy. So this hits really hard. It's, it's equivalent to Sariel's single target card, and everyone is well-versed by now with Sariel and how hard he hits, uh, not only in PV p but also in pve because a lot of those bosses have very high resistance so you get a lot of bonus damage from that skill her skill two is cool too it's double mana fusion and i don't think there's a similar card out there in the game yet there are some similar ones but not from the bronze silver and gold like i know um anyways it's an infect in infect damage equal to 100 and 10 180 percent or 280 percent on bronze silver and gold AOE attack to all enemies. So this 
applies in fact for one turn on bronze, one turn on silver, and two turns on gold. Uh, I think there's some characters that have a similar card, but they don't actually apply apply in fact on bronze. So this is unique to Merlin. Her ultimate ability inflicts damage from 400 to 600% of her attack on all enemies, but then it also creates a barrier around all allies equal to 5 to 20% of the damage. And when attacked, if you have the barrier up, no bonus effects except rupture will be applied, very similar to Goddess Liz Shield, so you won't get those like severs or flood damage, like anything like that. So people have to usually clear the shield first before doubling down and hitting you again so it can be really helpful even even if you have that sliver that five percent um shield which can be very small it's it's useful because it still requires that extra card to clear the shield before they can get the bonus uh text on whatever card they're going to hit you with you hit you with which is probably the hard hitting one um that being said if you have her maxed out that shield can actually get pretty beefy because not only she's doing more damage but her shield's based on the amount of damage done so it's actually pretty huge especially if you have three characters on the board her passive is really cool too so during the enemy's turn each enemy's skill cannot deal more than 40 percent of the hero's maximum hp so if she's at 100%, if you get hit with an ultimate, you're only going down to 60%. If you get hit again, if you're hit with another ultimate, you're going from 60 to 20%. If you're, from, if you're at 20%, you can actually die. You can't die with a single hit unless you're below 40% which is huge. It gives her a lot more survivability. She's not. She's a glass cannon, but she gets protection at certain thresholds of HP, which is amazing. So that's her kit. Her associates, um, let, let's talk about associates first. We're going to talk about a few things, but we'll talk about good associates for her. Um, the associate that most people probably have access to is her attack associate, which is Demon Meliodas. It gives bonus attack damage to uh, Merlin if you use him as the associate. Most people have a Demon Meliodas, probably the blue one built up. You got Lost Fang gear too. You can slap on him to give him extra, um, you know, boosted UR stats. Um, but we also have a couple other options that you can use as associates. Novage, what, what, who are those two associates? And do you think there's any sort of ideas behind using those two? Yeah, besides the one you just mentioned, um, uh, Asario. Um, is a good one um, because it's basically uh, the the same card. You can kind of utilize, you know, it's a green unit that has Sario's card in a sense. So if you, you have his grace applied, you're going to increase your crit damage. So your damage output is going to be, you know, pretty amazing out there. Um, the second one is Ludusio. Um So basically uh, with that, you, you get stun protection. You know, in a sense, because it, I mean, that's a very popular um, sub for people that are uh, looking for, how do you say, uh, uh, alt rushing. I know Sandy's mentioned it a few times on the show where she uses it with her, her LV. So, <laughs> um, I mean, if, if that's if that's one of your, your uh, I guess, tries in, in PvP, you could, you could uh, use Ludo as a sub. You know what? I totally missed talking about half of her passive. <laughs> People probably like be like, "What about the other part of it?" Because it, it, that brings you just kind of brought up a good point that Sario really helps a lot with her crit damage, and Merlin actually can get quite a bit of crit damage through the other half of her passive, which is she gets an increase to her attack related stats by one percent per four percent of remaining HP um, when using skills. So she can get. A solid, if I'm doing my math right here, oh gosh, 25% uh, extra attack related stats um, if she's at full HP. So her crit chance can actually get into like the 90s around there with cosmetics and, and if you've got her fully awakened. So she does somewhat reliably crit um, on some of her skills. So if you have that star heal there to reduce, you know, with his grace, make sure that your, your, ta your crits are hitting harder. You can make Merlin's already hard hitting cards hit even crazier. Um, so those are the associates and a bit of her passive. Let, let, let's talk about, um, let's maybe talk about her gear a little bit because there are some options that you can run with her in terms of gearing. Um, 
and they're not necessarily the the standard ones that you'd expect too. Uh, she does have a lot of options here, and a lot of it be, is because of the way that her passive works with her HP thresholds. Because you can rely on having to get hit three times if you're at full health before you're dead, you don't have to sit there and make sure that she's super beefy. She has like a little inherent beefiness built in because of that. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different ways you can go. I think the most accessible version or like the common advice that probably any of us would give is if you've already got a set of gear on your green Merlin, it's pretty transferable because there are a lot of different ways you can go here. You can go attack defense, HP defense, you can go attack crit, you can go HP crit. Almost anything under the sun actually works on Merlin here. Sandy, like what do you, what's your plan for the kind of gear that you're going and like what's your justification for it? You know, my, my Merlin, I already have a set of attack defense for her. Um, but, you know, HP defense, like I said, I'm aiming for that 4-6 baby Merlin because I need that CC boost. But there's so many options. And I, I love that you said the HP defense because like me or others who are going to pull that 1-6 and just skip it and we're going to save for the collab, you're going to need that CC doesn't really help her survivability right at all since her 40 percent like attack thresholds will cap out most of the damage you know um and it hurts that damage output does hurt so you know you, you give or take right you want her to do the most attack or do you want the higher cc to go first um i'm most likely gonna do the attack defense but um Attack crit sounds nice. You know, we've been so familiar with like crit gear for like dairy and then, you know, crit chance, crit damage, all of those good stuff. Uh, it's good. And it's great that like gold farming just went by. I'm hoping they're going to they're going to announce some sort of like equipment, um, you know, like boost. So we can all work on this. So hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> but attack defense is where I'm going to go just because. I'm going to spend so much money trying to pull for her, saving for the collab. I'm probably just going to throw on my Merlin gear on her in the beginning. I think at the end of the day, the most important decision to make when you're trying to decide what kind of gear to throw on her is not only like what resources you have to spend, but also just where you are in probably PVP content, which is where most people are probably going to use her and specifically geared PVP, is just what... CC you have compared to your opponents in general like do you find like you, you're you gonna need that extra CC boost to go first because going first let's be honest if you go first you're controlling the match and with Merlin it, it almost becomes even that much more important so yeah if, if you're wailing out like Sandy on Merlin getting her four six five six 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 maybe in max cosmetics yeah like it's easy to justify like an attack defense or an attack crit set because you're going to get your CC from other places. But let's say you just want the one six, like me or Novich, you know, one six and you're out. Uh, and maybe if you're not purchasing any cosmetics on her, like getting that CC boost is pretty important. And I wouldn't necessarily say you should go HP defense if you're not wailing out on her. But a lot of people are looking at her and be like, oh, attack crit, attack crit, attack crit. But attack defense actually gives you like a surprisingly... Um, like it's not a huge boost in CC, but it can make the difference between going first and second. And she hits hard with attack defense gear. She does. She could use the attack crit gear, but uh, um, but she doesn't have to have it, except for like some specific strats that we're gonna get to in a bit. But I think that's like my big takeaway from this. Like assess your situation, see if you generally think you're like short on CC, and see who uh, depends on your comp and like whether gear you're, run, you're running on your other people too. And if you need to squeak out a little extra. Hey, maybe an HP set's the way to go. But I think easily easiest thing to do is just attack defense or whatever you have for your other Merlin. Luckily, I did attack defense on my green Merlin, but I know a lot of people did HP defense, which is perfectly fine. Take out for a spin, see how she goes. You can always, you know, roll up some more gear if you need to down the road. Noah, is there any sort of gear su suggestions or advice that you're thinking for Merlin here? You're muted. I, I wish we could hear you right now, but yeah, you got to press that little button on your mic. <laughs> so uh, you guys uh, went through a lot of <laughs> different variations. Uh, one that I have seen people talk about um, in the guild, and I know you mentioned it too, Daz, was interesting enough, it's the uh, attack-life-steal combo. 
<laughs> which is actually pretty pretty funny because you know it's it's one of those again uh, those equipment that we all probably salvage and don't even look back. But it's 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 fun when someone tries to use that and it actually looks like it's doing a good job. <laughs> so um, I guess uh, the theory of Daz, you, you know a little about it, right? Where you were mentioning it before that. Yeah. Kind it, of like. If you have a lifesteal set, it gives you an extra 20% lifesteal. And she already has like five inherently. I'm not sure if you can get any from cosmetics. Most likely you can. But if you get her lifesteal up to like 25 to 30% range or whatever it ends up settling in on, like you can steal back a lot of your life. And then with a, the HP thresholds that she has, you know, she can't lose more than 40% per hit. It, it actually gets really um, much more advantageous when you get into a situation like where you might have a couple characters and they only have a couple characters left in PVP because they can only hit you twice, right? They can only use two cards. So you can life steal back up and make it extraordinarily annoying. It's like she's got like a built-in gold king heal or something every turn. Anytime she hits hard, she's getting 30% of it back. She, if she hit wheeze, it's even more, right? So um, I think that's the idea. I think it's a little bit more meme than anything. So I don't think it's necessarily like a viable set. And then also like, I don't think life still gives you like next to any CC. So uh, you're mo much more better suited going attack defense, unless, unless you love the memes and surprising people, because I'm not sure if people yeah. necessarily <laughs> expect it, <laughs> how much you could heal up in that situation. So I think the next logical place to talk about her is, is the PVP teams because gear can really be dependent on what kind of teams you're planning on using to uh, the sets really can rely on the support units you bring with Merlin. Merlin's a DPS unit. She does need some sort of support to enhance her kit. I think the most common uh, team you're going to see, at least pre-collab event, is going to be Merlin coupled with a Gother. Probably red um, since Green Gother's pass doesn't work, but, but Green Gother still has the rank up and alt depletion, so he's still a viable Gother if you like Green Gother or Red Gother. Um, and then probably Goddess Liz is the third. And then in the back, you'll have a, another damage dealer, like a, the one or Lost Fane Melios or Sariel, whoever you have built up. And the idea is there you go full full hand with Merlin. And if they end up clearing Merlin off the board or Gother or whoever they end up clearing off the board first, you still have another threat popping out afterwards. It's very common. You see a lot of this already. There's some variants on it too. You might have two damage dealers up front and then Goddess Liz in the sub. So what you know if they kill your Merlin or kill your T1, Goddess Liz pops out and you know helps the other one out. Common comp you see now is Sariel and the one, and then you have you know, goddesses in the back. So any sort of combination of those three is probably going to be the most accessible option for most people who decide to pull on Merlin and want to take her out into PvP. But there are some more whaley options too and probably stronger teams as well. Sandy Novage, any guys familiar with the, the Lidociel team or do you want me to go over it? See, she, Sandy's shaking her head. Maybe I should take this one for a spin then. <laughs> All right, so I spent a lot of time today watching a lot of JP YouTube um, uh, just to prepare for the podcast today. But one of the strongest comps, I think, consistently across the board, and this is only accessible to people who are like wailing out or who've historically wailed out in either Merlin or Lidociel because this really centers around Lidociel, having a really strong Lidociel. And you need to have a strong Lidociel for him to effectively work in pvp so the idea is you use merlin with lidociel and gother again doesn't really matter which color but usually people go red in the situation so lidociel as most of you know he reduces um crit resistance and crit defense on all units that he out ccs so merlin with 90 percent crit resistance gets a lot more consistent with her crits she hits harder with her crits and then go through typically in turn one you kind of have to go first in this comp for it to really shine you'd rank up your merlin hit with two silver cards maybe a gold aoe cleave if you can and that gold aoe cleave would hit really hard because who do you slide into the sub slot no other than demon hendrickson why might you ask? It's because of his passive. Demon Hendrickson makes debuff cards hit 50% stronger. So the AoE cleave 
is a debuff card. So you can watch videos. If you watch any Lido Seal Merlin comps, especially if she's on attack crit, and this is where attack crit really shines because you're really relying on that big damage on your first turn. You can literally one shot the whole opposing team with a gold Merlin card if you get it, or at least get like 90% of their damage down and hit another one if you got a silver cleave and a silver single target. So it is is ridiculous and people will forfeit really quickly and it's a really fast strat if you want to quickly rip through your five uh tickets uh in pvp really quickly but yeah again i don't think this strat is for the faint of heart you need a a strong ludosiel and a strong merlin because you need to go first is this sandy is this is this something that you might be rolling with who are you gonna take your merlin out with you know, I I love the Red Gother because I feel like for the free to play community des, like let's bring back Red Gother, you know? Green Gother is just such that festival unit and he's so broken. I love that you can't use him with like Baby Merlin, who's also such a strong player. Um I I do want to try the Lodosio and Demon Hendrickson, but I think my Demon Hendrickson is like one six but my Lodosio, believe it or not for the uh assault melee uh, banner i got him five six so i don't know i i will play around i do like to play around with pvp because i'm not i'm not that competitive person i'm thinking i'm thinking about doing something where like hey how far can i get in pvp with some like meme teams uh <laughs> just throw out i i mean seton's the king of that right like he showcases that but I'll go in there with my measly, um, you know, like baby Merlin, maybe my little Nanashi. I do have a <laughs> Nanashi video and he's he's OP. Like, I wish I would see more of him in PvP. And I don't know, maybe he'll work with baby Merlin. But I'm going to go with that, you know, Red Gother. I'm going to go with the Goddess Liz and a Damage Dealer. Um, I want to be safe, test her out because... I feel like I don't even know how to use Assault Meliodas and I have him 6-6 six, six, and I don't even win in PvP. I tried and I was like, I don't I don't understand this strat. And I was like, Sandy, you need to stick to Guild Boss. <laughs> like, go back to Einik. You don't belong here. <laughs> so, I mean, it's fun. It's fun. I'm excited to try out all these different teams and you've got me hyped, Daz, with this Demon Hendrickson in the back <laughs> with his passive. You know what, though? Like, a, a lot of fun and enjoyment that I find in this game is popping into ungeared PvP. You know, you've already got your, your, your... You can't demote beyond whatever it is, champ fiber. I can't remember what the threshold is there. So when you're sitting there, you're just like, I'm just going to try some stuff for fun. I don't, I don't really care if I win because I can't go down. I just want my, like, gem for my daily quest. So you can throw whoever the hell you want in there. And it's fun to just throw out crazy comp sometimes try it out see what the other person how the other person reacts right and especially when you have um you know strange uh g- rule sets too like i think it's, we've only got the rule set right now in geared pvp but still either way like it's it, it makes it even more interesting when you can throw out you know comps that can take advantage of those rules per se but yeah like i i'm a big fan of crazy crazy comps can't wait to see what kind of comps people pull out with merlin uh, no, it's de- I, I brought Frisia to ungeared PvP. <laughs> I don't even know what she does. And see, there's power in that too, right? If people don't know what the, the character does, they don't know how to deal with whatever the kit he or her has, right? So, but uh, no, it's, who are you planning on taking Merlin out for a spin with? You have any sort of comp in mind? Me, the ones we mentioned. You know, I, I probably can't do the Ludo one. My my Ludo is uh, still one six. Uh, at least I finally got him, so happy about that. Can't complain. Um, I'll probably I'll probably um, do the the damage dealer and, and the and the sub. I've actually been running Goddess Liz in this, as a sub. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Kind of just kind of see how that goes with uh, her on the front line and uh, maybe T one um, or Sario in in the back. Um, and kind of see, uh, it'd be nice to be more of on the uh, attack side for that. I think one reason that a lot of people are excited about Merlin too is is how well she potentially counters the one because she's a green unit type type advantage. She hits hard. She's got a really strong single target attack. It's 
got all the makings of a great the one counter and it's probably one of the reasons they created merlin and her kit in the first place was to try and shake that meta up a lot so i'm pretty excited to take her out for a spin just to to show them t1s who's boss uh next week so that's, that's what i'm excited to use her for and and to be honest with you like there's so many different ways and, and compositions you can use her with like any sort of combination of go through goslas damage dealers you can even use tanks in there too if you want but one of the nice things that merlin's got is unlike um the one or maybe even a sariel she's not as susceptible to getting one shot well she isn't as susceptible to getting one shot because you can't you have to three shot her right so it, it, it gives her a little extra flexibility that she doesn't necessarily need that you know green tank deanne um that you might help be running with the one or your blue drools of the world and just having that guy's liz um gives her like that extra you know, survivability to, to make it even that much more annoying to deal with her. So she's definitely got a cool, unique kit, but again, I don't think she necessarily is like a must pull to, um, to do well in PVP. Any of the other damage dealers are almost interchangeable. Now you've got the one Sario lost me Meliodas in some case who isn't faring well now with all the ones rolling around, but you can just slide your, your Merlin to those slots and, and you're probably gonna do just fine again. Make sure your CC is up there, though, because you want to go first pretty much in any situation. So one thing that Merlin has is she's the first big damage dealing unknown character. And we know because we have foresight that there's a new collab coming up. We got the ReZero collab, which is chock full of unknown units, one of which actually enhances all unknown units on the team, and that's Rem. Uh, the blue haired mate wait a minute ram it's the red haired mate i can't remember which one that is ram 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 is ram. blue ram ram is red ram is red, red. so it's the ram it's, she's the free unit that you get on the collab so if you have merlin you're gonna get ram assuming you you're playing in a couple weeks hopefully if you're listening to this podcast you're still gonna be playing in a couple weeks but once you get ram you can slide her into these comps and it kind of changes some things because there's also amelia too that's on that banner who's a really strong unit if you get her high alt level uh she's got like a lost me meliota style alt she's got a lot of control with a freeze a really good unit to pair with merlin too so that's another that's another tough thing too a lot of people are saving for the collab but merlin can really enhance those collab compositions as well so uh it's a it's a bit of a tough spot for people who are on a short gem budget um but still some things to think about for future merlin but you don't necessarily need the collab units but they can enhance what she does and um for anyone who is excited to get that one six merlin to make gray demons faster as i know that's why everybody's pulling for her, right uh she actually does make a two-turn gray demon strat on hell very possible and reliable that's possibly one of the things that su surprises i'm actually the most excited about because i feel like i spend way too much time doing demons um novage do you, are you familiar with this gray demon strat the two-turn strat is this something that you're going to be using with your one six merlin <laughs> yeah definitely um i don't uh, remember the exact comp that you need to use for it. But because um, when she first came out, you know, they, those videos were all on my feed, <laughs> on, on my YouTube. <laughs> it's, it's funny, like you could not know that she wasn't out yet. Like you, you, you knew. And luckily that's the time that I started playing uh, uh, on JP. So I was able to get her actually luckily on my first draw, hoping to get that same luck on my global <laughs> account. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I mean, saw all the potential and, you know, she's so far been an amazing unit for my story modes and all the PD content. It's like, she's the unit that I, that I use for mainly for everything. Well, you, sir, don't care about Grey Demons nearly as much as I do, apparently, because I've got this strat down and I've been thinking about it. I've been dreaming about it for the past month, as soon as I ever knew it was a thing. Um, but just to educate anyone who's listening, what you're probably going to see, you know, assuming that enough people get Green Merlin, is that you're going to see the gray, gray meta, gray demon meta change. The, the king meta is fine if you've used king, Gother, Danifor, Liz, even all rushing with uh, green Elizabeth, which is, can be reliable. But green Merlin strat is definitely the fastest. I say green Merlin, but I mean baby Merlin. Um, and basically the way you work it is on one side, you have Gother, Danifor, Liz, 
and Baby Merlin. And on the other side, you have Baby Merlin, Gother, and a buffer. You can use Gil Thunder or Helbrim. It doesn't matter because your Gother passive isn't going to really stack there. I'm not sure which one's better. But either way, Danifor Liz is going to rank up one player's cards, whoever's got her, to silver. They play their Gother card, ranks all their cards up to gold, all the other players' cards up to silver. The other player plays their Gother. So everyone's got gold cards, turn one, right? No RNG at all. And that's what we like to hear, no RNG. The Gil Thunder or Helbrim person uses their buff card. And then you basically one tap the boss with Merlin's attack guard. Turn two, you one tap phase two. Uh, you've also got the AOE cleave too to maybe supplement damage a little bit there. But that's really all it takes. Like she hits that hard um, that that's all you really need to do to get a, pretty much a guaranteed two turn uh, clear. And this is what I'm excited for. I don't think there's any RNG involved. I could be wrong in that. Maybe you're like relying on a bit of a crit to hit, but. Either way, I think demons are going to get hell. Demons are going to get a lot faster if they're of the grave variety. Okay, right. I think we've exhausted the Merlin discussion. Um, I, I I'm actually pretty excited to watch Sandy's pull video now. I I don't know what it is like if I'm a glutton for punishment, but after I'm done my pulls, I want to watch other people pull too. So, Sandy, I, you have to do that video. I got that's my last little final thought. You got to make sure you do that for us all. I'm going to stay up. Uh, I think uh, maintenance ends around midnight for me. Um, so I'll be comfy in my little Merlin t-shirt. Um, I'll try to do like one screenshot and then I'm going to go for it. I'm hoping for that four, six, you know, um, cheer me on. <laughs> we're, we're, all, we're all pulling for you. I'll, I'll probably have to watch it in the morning because your 12 o'clock is my three o'clock in the morning. So oh. it might, might be a little late for me. I'll just have to pull for Merlin when I wake up, I think. <laughs> if I wake up in the middle of the night, maybe I'll quickly grab the phone and, and do some pulling, but we'll see. Maybe it'll be online at the time. But the other thing we really want to talk about today is Einic, because we do have the guild boss queen here. So it'd be, we'd be remiss if you didn't talk about Einic and free to play, hard to play strats that we can use to maximize those guild boss scores, get those 6k scores, maybe even higher if you're looking to push for the highest score in your guild. So tell us about it, Sandy. Yeah, so Einik, um, you know, I, I talk a lot of trash about him, but if you haven't gotten that Tavern Master title already that gives you that extra 4% crit chance, that's going to save you so much of the headache because I can tell you right now, uh, pre this title, I would run Einik like 24-7 basically for a good two days to get that crit in. And with that title, you're eating that crit chance food, right? And you have Slater's crit chance weapons and his equipment maxed out. You're starting the fight with 161 crit chance on Slater. And his passive, right, decreases the enemy's crit resistance by his crit chance. And it's just, it, it, really, it really saves you the headache. I have found that I crit way more often um, but I feel like net marble is kind of trolling me because they're giving me that crit, but they're not giving me the RNG and the cards to go for it. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, I'm going to do a little offering, uh, offer RNGs Jesus my firstborn, um, and say, you know what, just, just give me that for push week. That's all I want. Does your, but, does your first newborn know about this, <laughs> this arrangement? <laughs> well, maybe <laughs> be like, yeah, be ready for it. <laughs> But, you know, so if you're a hard to play and you're trying to be the best in your guild or you're trying to go for that guild wars, um, the Green Gother, Slater, um, the Helbrum, and of course, Dairy Queen is the way you're trying to go. And if you're not, you're more free to play, then try the Liz Hawk strat, you know, which is a mono red HP strat with Tweet God. And you're basically in the first heart, and I'm just talking about extreme right now. You're attack ceiling in stage one, then building the dairy buffs and using Liz Hawk's uh, rank two card, which it, which supplements Slater's debuff disable. Um, so that's what she does. And it can net you, you know, 2.6, 4K on extreme, 2.6 to 2.8K on hard. Um, and I, I love that strat because you don't got to really change gears around. You can take it to extreme, hard, and normal. But again, if you're hard to play and you're trying to, you know, play to win, 
then the Slater crit chance one is the way to go. Um, and you're doing that for extreme and hard. And then we always rely on Zeldris. So for those of you who are thinking about, should I build equipment for Zeldris, build that HP defense. He's really just there for his, uh, you know, attack related stats to demons. And you're using Tweety God again, like that man built him a UR set. Like he's just, he's OP, all right? And try hard again. Don't forget the kill turn, right? To alt with Helbrum to remove the defense buff, right? A rank three Helbrum attack buff, which gives you the increase of 30% um, to attack related stats. The rank three of dairy buff. I'm not gonna go into all the details. You can check it out on my YouTube channel. I did really hard. Um, don't mind me. That was one of the first videos that I did when I came out with the channel, but I'm very proud of it. I spent a lot of time kind of going over gear and going over those turns. Um, I will have to go back because it, it, there's one thing that our Captain Daz, our host here has taught me is those timestamps. <laughs> and I gotta go back and put the timestamps in because Daz taught me that is just so organized and so easy for viewers to just kind of get to that topic. Yeah, and I can't stress enough how important it is to just watch Sandy's videos. It, you can't really do it justice just talking about it for 30 seconds. You can give like a little bit of like a, a little prep, you know, to make sure people know like, the kind of heroes and stuff to use. But there's so many nuances to it that you can't um, – replace what a Sandy video can give you. And and I, I know we hype your videos a lot, Sandy, but they really are the gold standard. And they're they're considered the gold standard by a lot of top level guilds too for strategies because you go over all the gear and it's not necessarily the gear you expect it to be. And sometimes the sub rules are different. Sometimes you require like a certain amount of resistance or crit chance or whatever or minimizing attack on certain characters. Like some characters you don't want to get as high attack as possible. You want to get the lowest attack possible. You got to take off cosmetics off some characters. There's so much detail to it, and Sandy goes over all that in hyper, hyper detail. So it's really important. Um, but I do want to say, though, like for most people, don't even look at this Slater strat. Unless you're, unless you're a glutton for punishment and you're trying to get that really crazy score for placements, um, because you're going to be running Guild Boss like hundreds of times. Like, I'm not, I'm not kidding, like hundreds of times potentially to get like your maximum score, get that ideal RNG and like, get the crit at the end. And it can be an extraordinarily frustrating uh, experience and it can cause burnout in the game. So like that's the last thing you want, especially after coming off of Kalak, which is one of the one of the tougher RNG bosses too. If you just want to get your 6K rewards or even just put up like a decent score, use the HP strat with Liz Hawk, um, and company, the mono red strat, Derriere, uh, whoever I can't even remember who the four red are. Red Gother, Red Gother, and Twee God. Free to play. <laughs> yeah, because the the RNG is like very limited, l minimal. Um, on hard, uh, I, I've you, I think it's a twenty five percent chance, like literally, to to clear it properly with that comp. Extreme, you're probably doing less than twenty runs to get like the ideal comp that you, the ideal run that you need, and you'll get over six thousand. You'll do pretty well. You can use it on on normal too, and you can do just fine. So, if you're looking for those six k runs, that's the strat to go with. Don't even look at the other one. But if you are looking at the other crazy strat, the Slater Derriere strat. Sandy's the resource for you. So, speaking of which, let's talk about the featured comment, which gives Sandy even more pats on the back because she deserves as many pats on the back as possible. Sandy, you want to tell us who the featured comment is for today? Yes, I am so excited to announce uh, our featured comment today. So every show, we try to feature a comment wherever you guys leave it for us, whether that be on you know Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Discord, if you join us in the community. Um, but today it's coming from YouTube again. Like, thank you guys for following us on YouTube. But it is from a very loyal sub. Uh, we see you out there, Kaliga Relinquil. <laughs> and his comment here says, LOL, air quote, <laughs> laugh out loud. Thanks, Sandy, for saying my name properly. Hopefully I said it again. Just wanted to say that you guys rock. I've been with your channel since day one and from the very first podcast. I really love the games you all play on here. 
Jeopardy is low key my favorite. <laughs> One suggestion for newer units, may, but maybe also for others, how about going into a little detail for suggested equipment? We did. Going on, he says, like what works best for this character or what you personally use for any content, PVP or PVE. Love you guys. And we love you right back. And we see you there in the Twitch channel. We see you on YouTube. So thank you so much for leaving us that comment. And yeah. It's like he orchestrated this whole show too. <laughs> like we pretty much did everything that he mentioned there. So it, hey, if you have comments to leave, we do listen to feedback. Like we're, we're proving it right here. We literally did everything. Uh, oh my gosh, I don't even want to say his name wrong. That Everything that he said, um, including the game that we're about to do, which is Jeopardy. Um, and just a little note too, we, we've kind of settled into a four game rotation, but if anyone has any suggestions, we're fresh out of ideas. We like the four we got, but if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. We'd love to hear new ideas for games. And just remember to, we've had some good comments about potential games. But they have to be good for both uh, video and audio listeners because more than half our audience is actually audio only. So we have to make sure that it, it does work well in that format, not just the video as well. Okay, so that being said, we're going to roll into Jeopardy. Uh, so I'm sure everyone knows how Jeopardy works, uh, but we've got two categories. I'm not going to bother explaining Jeopardy, but I'm sure you can figure it out along the way. It's kind of a trivia game if you haven't heard of it before. we got two categories. One is Mischievous Merlin. Seems appropriate with Merlin coming in a few short hours. And the other category is Collaborama, which is collaboration-related Jeopardy type trivia. So Sandy and Novich are going to duke it out. We've got point values on the board from 200, 400, 600, 800, and 1,000 dollars in each category. If you get it right, you get that money. If you get it wrong, you get negative that money. And at the very end, we're going to have final Jeopardy where you can wager as much or as little as you'd like from what you got and basically get that much back if you get it right and you get that much taken away if you get it wrong. Excuse me, if you get it wrong. So Sandy has already told me she's going to win. So we will give her control over the board to reinforce her confidence. Sandy, do you want to take one off of Mischievous Merlin or Collaborama? And what dollar value do you want to go with first? So I'm going to start easy because I'm not, I'm hoping it's not a lot of re-zero characters, <laughs> but let's, let's, let's go with uh, Mischievous Merlin for 800 800. Yes. I love when people just go like for a random number. Okay. So mischievous Merlin for 800. And these are Merlin related questions. If you couldn't guess that already, this was the foe that surprised Merlin and turned her to stone. Novich got that one in first. What's the answer there? Or the, I guess the question, Novich. <laughs> what is Galen? That is correct. I won't document it's who is Galland, but I guess he could be a white oh, yeah. demon. What, what is? What is he? <laughs> Doesn't even really matter. Even if you said Galland, I think we, I'm pretty sure I would have taken it. We're not really stickler for the rules here. Um, I dock him. <laughs> San, Sandy <laughs> is suddenly becoming a stickler. That might come and bite you in the butt, though, if, you, if you're not careful, Sandy. Uh, but no, that does give you control of the board. Where do you want to go next? Let's go with Collaborama for 800. Collaborama for 800. You guys like the 800s today. So Collaborama for 800. Puck is possibly the cutest friend of this collab character. Oh, Sandy. Who is it? Who is Amelia? Amelia, that's right. Puck is the cute little cat that's on the shoulder of Amelia. Uh, and I know this because I watched all the anime. But you'll be seeing a lot more of Puck along with Amelia as soon as the ReZero collab comes out. Okay, Sandy, it's all tied up at 800s. You can't pick another 800. Which one are you going to pick this time? Let's do uh, Collaborama for 200. Collaborama for 200. <laughs> this one kind of came up earlier in the show. While they're tough to tell apart, this is the mo more popular maid sister with blue hair. Oh, Sandy just beat out Novich by a hair. It is uh, Rem. Who is Who Rem? Is Rem? Who is Rem is correct for 200. I, I, I'm glad I wrote that down because I always mix the two up and I was interested to see if you would do, but I guess we talked about it earlier. 
Okay. You can keep going because you still got control of the board, Sandy. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, let's do Collaborama for 600. Collaborama for 600. If you put Ryu from Street Fighter franchise and this KOF character side by side, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. Novage. Uh, Kyo. That's right. Who is Kyo? As someone who played a lot of Street Fighter but never played Kingdom of Fighters, as soon as I saw Kyo, I was like, that's a Ryu ripoff <laughs> right there. At least he seemed like. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much truth there is to that, but as someone who likes Street Fighter, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Okay, Novage, you've pulled ahead of Sandy. You've got 1,400. She's got 1,000. Where would you like to go? Let's go um, Merlin for 400. Mischievous Merlin for 400. This was the release order of all the Merlins in the game. Oh, Novage is going to take it. Can you remember the order of the Merlins? Uh, let's go with uh, the green Merlin, red Merlin, and then blue Merlin. That's incorrect. That is 400 docked off of Novage. Sandy, going for the steal? I think it's uh, who is blue Merlin, who is red Merlin, who is green Merlin. No? No. You both got docked there. Actually, Red Merlin was the first banner in the game. So it was Red Merlin. Green Merlin came a couple weeks later after Green Bond. So it was Red Merlin, Red Merlin, Green Merlin, Blue Merlin came out. And then, you know, if you want to get technical, I guess we got Baby Merlin as the fourth one. But we did, I wasn't really too worried about that. So, hey, it's a wash. You both got that one wrong. But I can't remember who had control of the board. Who had the control? Who picked that one? I think it was Sandy, right? Novage? Novage, okay. Novage, you got control oh, of the board. My bad luck. <laughs> uh, let's go uh, collab. Uh, collaborama for 400. Collaborama for 400. This collab character can change between a slime and a person at will. Oh, Novage got in first. Oh my god. Uh, his name is Should have buzzed in if you didn't know the answer, bud. Yes, I do. Uh, re, re, I can't say it. I don't. And because you can't I'll say it, me, I think yeah, I'll, give, I'll give it to Sandy. You're getting docked 400 points. You're down to 600. Sandy, for the steal. Who is Rimamuru? That's Rimamuru. That is correct. You're up to 1,000. Sandy has taken over the lead. Sandy, you also get control of the board. Yeah. Let's go with Collaborama for a thousand. Ooh, getting risky here. If you come across her in PvP, you better get rid of her fast because the longer she's around, the tankier she gets and the harder she hits. Novage. A Mikasa. Mikasa Ackerman is the correct response for a thousand. Novage, that was a big one. You vaulted right ahead of Sandy. This is a good one. This is neck and neck. You guys keep flipping back and forth. I like it. Novich is 1,600. Sandy is 1,000. Novich, however, has control of the board. We've got still left on the board. Mischievous Merlin for 200, 600, and 1,000, and Collaborama for 600. So Mischievous Merlin for 600. Mischievous Merlin for 600. She was Merlin's apprentice and has an unhealthy obsession with Gil Thunder. Sandy. Who is Vivian? That's right. You were uber fast on that one. You said apprentice, and I was like, ooh. ooh, ooh. Yeah, I think she's had a couple of apprentices, but that's, yeah, definitely one of the most notable ones, at least from earlier on. That brings you guys into a dead heat. You're both tied at 1,600. So, Sandy, you've got control of the board. Oh, I lost track. I was too excited. Miss uh, Jimmy Merlin for 200 and 1,000, and we've also got Collaborama for 600 left. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's do Mischievous Merlin for 200. 200. <laughs> this is what I was looking forward to. This is the proper spelling of Belialuin, Merlin's father. Are you, you going to take a stab at the spelling bee? Sandy, no cheating. Let's see. 
B E L I. <laughs> <laughs> you keep going. I'm not gonna tell you you get it right or wrong until you get the whole thing done. Hold on. Can, can I can I write it? I'll show you. B E L I. Keep going. You B E L I. Belly Allen. A. Keep okay. going. <laughs> Uh, B E L I L U M. What are the last two letters? I need to get a clarification on those. U M. So close, yet <laughs> so far, Sandy. I, I applaud. I applaud the effort, though. Novage, are you are you bold enough to try it? No, I, 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 smart, smart man. I wouldn't try it either. So Sandy, you were close. You had most of it right until the end. B E L I A L U I N as Nancy in the end. So you missed the I and then the N, you just put the M in the end. So anyhow, that puts no slightly ahead, 1600 to 1400. There are two more questions on the board. Mischievous Merlin for a thousand, Clabarama for 600. I believe Sandy still has control, though, because she got the Vivian question right, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that was Mischievous Merlin, 200 gone. Um, so we'll do, wait, Calabo-Rama for 1,000 is gone? Yep, calabo for 600 or Mischievous Merlin for 1,000. Let's do calabo for 600. Clearing off calabo for 600. Oh, hey, no, we've already done this one. <laughs> okay, so there's only one question left on the board. So it's Mischievous Merlin for 1,000, so I'll just read it. This is the only Merlin in the game without a debuff card. Novage. That would be Green Merlin? That is correct. And that puts you in a commanding lead, 2,600 to Sandy's 1,400. Just for everyone knowledge here. Green Merlin doesn't have a debuff. Red Merlin has a freeze as well as a recovery disable. Blue Merlin has a card that seals out everything but the attack cards. And then Baby Merlin's got an infect AoE. So that's why Green Merlin doesn't have a debuff. So going to Final Jeopardy. This is where we trust you guys because we don't have pad of paper or any sort of judging here other than me. Uh, I'll, give you the, I'll give you the category. You just think about how much you're going to wager. I'll trust you. And then let me know what the answer is. And again, I'll trust you too on that. So the Final Jeopardy category is, it's been a while. All right. So think of your wagers. Again, Novid, you got 2,600. Sandy, you've got 1,400. I know we all love math so much on this podcast. So lock your wagers in your head and ready for the question. This is how many full months the global version of Grand Cross has been out for. So I'll give you a few more seconds while you do even more mental math, which is fantastic. I know we definitely do need the Jeopardy music. That's a good little suggestion in chat there, but I, I could try and sing it, I guess, but I think I've already kind of expended the amount of time we have. So we'll go with Sandy. You know what? Next time I will sing it. That's a promise. Sandy, what was your wager? Yeah, my weakness. Does I can't do math. I'm like the worst Asian, but um, I'm gonna risk it. I'm, I'm, uh, Going for all of it. All, all in. <laughs> all in. 1400. And what's what's your answer? Oh man, I'm not good at math. I'm I'm gonna. It was full months, right? Full months. Yeah. So it's one year. That's 12 months. It's been two months. I'm gonna say, <laughs> what is? <laughs> What is 15 months? 15 is the incorrect response. Sandy, I'm sorry, but you're finishing off with zero today. Novage, did, did you go for the glory here and bet it all? How much did you wager? I, I wagered 500. How much you can see it? 500. Trying to be sneaky with math, which is great. So you're going to win no matter what. But what was your response? You know, uh, I know, I think the, a lot of the... Uh, 
events kind of probably throw off people. But I, I remember actually waiting for this game. I pre-downloaded it and all that stuff. So I remember it happened in March. So I'm going to go with just 12 months. 12 months. That is also an incorrect response, but a little closer than Sandy's. The correct response was 13 months because it was March 3rd. So we've already passed the 13th month. So now we're into April. So that's officially, officially 13 full months since release. So that's Jeopardy. Novich, congratulations on winning. Sandy, your prediction was incorrect at the top of the show. You uh, did not win. You actually got zero dollars. <laughs> so hey, it's better than getting negative, right? We in the I think this might be the first Jeopardy we've had where someone wasn't negative going into Final Jeopardy or needed like a boost to make it interesting. You actually kept it competitive, both of you, to the end. So I think it was a successful, successful Final Jeopardy. But that being said. After the game is where we always end off the show, and it's always a fun note to end it on. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today at the Boar Hat Tavern. It's a Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross podcast. Stream this on our Twitch channel live, twitch.tv slash Borhat Tavern, every week on Monday nights at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. Sandy, we've mentioned your videos a few times. We should probably tell people where to find them. Where can people find your stuff? You can find me on YouTube and it's with Sandy double Y 70 S and I'll make sure I'm going to come out more videos very soon. <laughs> if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can email us anytime at podcast at borehattavern.com or you can follow us on Instagram or Twitter at at Borhat Tavern. All three of us are members of the global guild denied part of the scoundrels Alliance. If you'd like to join our ranks, you can reach out to us. We've got many ways to do it. Email, Instagram, Twitter, just get in touch with us. Leave a comment. We'll get in touch with you. You can also subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you happen to find your podcast online. We're probably there. You can also find our shows on our website, a horrible website, which I have promised to Sandy I'm going to start fixing this week. So if, if I haven't fixed it by next week, you can all call me out on it. That's going to be borehattavern.com. Depending on when you see this, you might be seeing a horrible website or maybe a less horrible website, depending on how, how long it takes me to get around to this. We'd also like to thank Madeline Marois for crafting our killer logo. Streetwise Rhapsody from YouTube for composing our awesome cover of the Grand Cross theme song that we use for our intro music. And Andre Bobe from ArtStation for letting us use his outstanding 3D renders of the Borhat for our pre-live and post-video splash screens. And we're also going to use those on the website as well, yeah. So you can find all of their work at the websites in the description of wherever you're watching or listening to this. Everybody, thanks for listening. Have a great week. <laughs>